hey guys so I'm currently training for the Boston Marathon in a few months so I thought it was a good time to go over how I went from the couch to qualifying for Boston in about 21 months more after this It's been a little while since I put out a video, so I thought it would be an excellent time to give a preview of what's coming up on my race calendar for 2022. So right now I am training for the 2022 Boston Marathon. This will be the 126th running of the Boston Marathon, which first ran in 1897 with a grand total of only 18 people. So to get you caught up in April of 2018, I set out with the goal to train for my very first full marathon, which ended up being the Santa Clarita Marathon since I could almost see the start line from my bedroom window. When I was training for the race, people would often ask me if I was planning on running more marathons and I would say, I don't know, <laughs> ask me after I finish this one. So on November 4th, 2018, I finished that race with a stress fracture in my foot and a burning in my heart. I completed the course with a time of four hours and four minutes and 26 seconds, which I was happy with because it was my first and I was injured, but it wasn't the sub four that I set out to get. Now that I had slain the marathon dragon, I started to look towards another goal, which was to qualify for the Boston Marathon. For those unfamiliar, most marathons are filled on a first come, first serve basis. This means anyone crazy enough to want in only needs to pay the entry fee. Shut up and take my money. However, there are other races like the World Majors, which I will talk about more in depth in another video with a lottery type system set in various ways to accommodate local runners versus traveling runners. So in the case of like New York City Marathon, if you live in Manhattan or Queens, you take priority over somebody who lives in Phoenix, Arizona. It is pretty difficult to get selected for some of these race lotteries, so many runners will rely on running for charity to get into these races. Boston Marathon is a bit different though, in that there are only three ways to get into the race. The first option is to run for charity, but usually Boston Marathon charities have a much higher threshold than other races. For example, Katherine Switzer, the first woman to run Boston, has a charity called Fearless 26-1, and they had two spots which they required $9,000 of charity donations. This means that a person who wanted that needed to raise $9,000 just to get to the starting line. This includes no other expenses, travel, hotel, that's all additional. The second way is to be connected with one of the major sponsors. So if you got an in at Amazon or Gatorade Endurance, the last way to get in is to qualify, which is the majority of runners in the Boston Marathon. When races around the country say they are Boston qualifiers, that means that if you complete that race's course under your qualifying time for your age and gender, you have a shot at getting into Boston. Now I know what you're thinking right now, what do you mean a shot at getting into Boston? If you beat your qualifying time, why don't they just let you in? Great question and I'm totally glad I asked it. The Boston Marathon has a limited capacity at roughly 30,000 runners. If they have more people qualify than they have capacity for, the Boston Marathon selects people based on the amount of their buffer. For example, if a person's qualifying time was 3.30 and they completed their race at 3.20, they would have a buffer of 10 minutes. Therefore, that person would be prioritized over a person who had a buffer of only 5 minutes. My qualifying time to beat was 310, which meant I needed to cut nearly an hour off my first marathon time. So I began to focus on any aspect to shave off minutes of my marathon times. Got to work training for the 2019 LA Marathon with the hopes of closing the gap on a Boston qualification. I recapped my first race and noted some mistakes that I had made. One of the most significant mistakes in the first race was not fueling correctly. I had it in my mind that I was just gonna eat gummies and I hardly ate any and hit the wall hard. For the LA Marathon, I would implement using energy gels because of how quickly and efficiently it is to take in calories. To combat any potential stress fractures, I consulted my chiropractor friend, Dr. Taylor Levine, who I often refer to as Team Doctor on Instagram. 
He suggested using kinesiology tape and gave me a tutorial on properly taping up my feet. Look for a video on this in the future. That reminds me, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos. The last thing that I changed before running Los Angeles was adding Alt Red to my training and race strategy. Alt Red is a substance with one ingredient, which is 50 milligrams of beet root extract, also known as betalane. Betalane is the dye in beets and other fruits and vegetables that makes them red. I would suggest looking, just go Google the cardiovascular benefits of beets to know why I added this. So, Alt Red helps improve performance and recovery. The most significant benefit is a 5.4% increase in exercise efficiency discovered in scientific studies, which may not sound like a lot, but that would equate to 13 minutes off my marathon time. In addition, Alt Red helps improve oxygen delivery while raising your lactic acid threshold and reducing exercise induced muscle damage. I will generally take two an hour before race time, one just before the start, and one capsule every 60 minutes during a race. With these adjustments, along with switching my training routine from Nike Run Coach to a program from V.02, in about 18 weeks I was able to cut off 26 minutes and 41 seconds off my second marathon, giving me a time of 3 hours, 37 minutes and 45 seconds, which now leaves me 27 minutes and 45 seconds away from my qualifying time. So my next race was the San Francisco Marathon. Now, now I know what you're probably thinking, uh, brah, what about all the hills? The Wall Street Journal called the San Francisco Marathon the race even marathoners fear. When most people think of San Francisco, they think of ridiculous hills that no sane person would want to walk up, let alone run. Is any 1970s movie complete without a car chase through the hills of San Francisco? So clearly the San Francisco Marathon is not the most ideal race if you're trying to qualify for Boston. Still I make bad decisions, so here we go. Keeping with my mindset before Los Angeles Marathon, I started to look for ways to shave off minutes and get me closer to that elusive BQ. The main thing that I did before San Francisco was upgrading my shoes to the hyped Nike 4%s, which got their name because they allegedly make a runner 4% faster with its cushioning and carbon fiber plate. They were also about two ounces per shoe lighter than the shoes I wore in Los Angeles. So as a general rule, and because in marathons, small things equal big things, every ounce you remove from a shoe is 55 pounds less to carry over the course of a mile. That comes out to 2,882 pounds less weight over the course of 26.2 miles I had to move in San Francisco over Los Angeles. But did it work? Well, my time in San Francisco was three hours 24 minutes and 52 seconds, an improvement of 12 minutes and seven seconds over Los Angeles just 16 weeks before. When I started training for the San Francisco Marathon, I didn't really know which race I would be running next, except that I had been selected as a Houston Marathon ambassador at that point. So that was where my focus was until one day I got an email from the good folks at Michelob Ultra and they were like, hey, you wanna come run the New York City Marathon with a bunch of cool people and have your name on a billboard and make lifelong friends? And I was like, oh, I am down, I am totally down. Lock me down. <laughs> so now I'm looking to run the United States largest marathon, which would happen 364 days after completing my first marathon. For perspective, I believe uh, Santa Clarita Marathon, the year I ran, had just over 200 finishers. New York City Marathon has over 50,000 people that run it. So we're really swanning up here. How can it get any better? Well, it did actually. A few weeks after San Francisco Marathon, Gatorade Endurance reached out about a campaign they were doing called My Fuel, My Journey. You can see a link in the description, but it is a short video that gives an overall overview of my story and best of all they released this the week of the New York City Marathon. While filming the video I got to try several of Gatorade Endurance's products which I loved especially the energy gels. They were just what I was looking for a gel that is not overly sweet and not too thick in consistency but still has an excellent calorie count. So I added those gels to my race strategy. Next I added hot shots to help with cramping later in races. The other thing I did was reach out to my t new Team Ultra friends to see if there were anyone that wanted to try to hit 308 with me, giving me a Boston qualification and a two minute buffer. Now this worked out great, 
until I went a little faster than I should have in the first half and had to drop back at mile 20. I did PR at a time of 3.15 to 38, but unfortunately came up short from qualifying for Boston. So now I have eight weeks to train for Houston and cut off this remaining five minutes and 38 seconds. During the time between New York City and Houston, Gatorade Endurance added new flavors of energy gel that included caffeine. Unfortunately, I could not buy these online as they were sold out everywhere and I had to resort to picking up some at the Houston Race Expo. Generally speaking, taking something new in a race is not recommended, but it was an unusual situation and I really wanted the caffeine boost. However, I did have some issues with the strawberry flavor not playing nice in my stomach with the hot shot. The last thing that I added was a go-to device which is a little complicated to explain in this video, but I will discuss it in another. I will just say that this device does not function as a training mask does, which is supposed to make it harder to breathe through your lungs and allegedly make your lungs stronger. The go-to device does not make it hard to breathe. Instead, it uses PEEP technology or positive end expiratory pressure, a fancy way of saying it adds a little pressure on your exhale to keep your lungs from fully deflating. This in turn increases an athlete's VO2 max. So just like Alt Red, it legally increased an athlete's endurance. On January 19, 2020, I crossed the Houston Marathon finish line with a time of 3.05.34, giving me a buffer of four minutes and 26 seconds. This time would be good enough to meet most Boston qualifying cutoffs. So we are caught up. I am now qualified for Boston. So last year when they announced Boston was coming back, they moved it to the day after Chicago Marathon and that the size of the field would be reduced by 10,000 people, which also raised the cutoff time to seven minutes and 47 seconds. Like, no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 I was a little disappointed by this, but I really wanted to run the Boston Marathon on Patriots Day, which is traditionally run on. In this last December, I got the news that everyone that beat their qualifying time was in. So on Monday, April 18th, 2022, the day after my birthday, my 42nd birthday, I am set to run the Boston Marathon for the first time and I am stoked. Hopefully this was a little helpful to you guys. I just wanted to say, you know, if you're trying to qualify for Boston, look for any advantages you can get, whether it be caffeine, whether it be lighter shoes, whatever you can do to shave off time, that's gonna make the job easy. Marathons are already hard enough. You don't need to make them any harder. Okay, so that's, basically a snapshot of how I went from being a very casual, you know, I'll, I'll run a 5k here, run a 5k there, maybe 30 to 40 miles a, a month tops to qualifying for the Boston Marathon in about 21 months. After Boston, um, I will be running the Mountains to Beach Marathon, which is in Ventura, California, a very unique underrated race. The race starts at around 750 feet of elevation, goes up to 950 feet, at mile three and is primarily downhill from Ojai, California to Ventura. Well, that about does it for the first half of my 2022. I will be talking about the second half of 2022 in my next video. I have an exciting announcement that I could use your help with. I do hope this video is helpful to you in coming up with your next race plan. This video is designed to show where my head is in making the decisions that I did. What works for me may not work for you, everyone's different so be sure to experiment with the, your training runs be sure to hit that subscribe button and we will see you in the next video run positive guys and have a great day